I have to say, the most requested review is for the GWG1000 Mudmaster, also saying I need to add one to my collection. So why is this Mudmaster such a great G-Shock? This is what I need to find out. My plan was to borrow the GWG1000 from Watcho, and I even had an offer from my dear friend at Watch Crazy, but he's still heavily into the honeymoon period. That doesn't look like he'll return anytime soon, so no finger doms for him while his cherries are popping. Suddenly I received a message from a friend and subscriber, Nigel Stevens, that he's selling three of his G-Shocks, a Gravity Master, a MTG and the GWG 1000. Well this wasn't on my plans to buy, but with a good deal through friends and family, I landed a perfect example, which looks like the only action it had was being placed in the tin at the Casio factory. It was in new condition with no signs of DNA, complete with the box, tin and enough books to build a rainforest. And as it was bought from Watcho last year, still has two and a half years of warranty. So there you go Watcho, you gotta mention anyway. The GWG1000 versus the GGB100 Mudmaster. Now that'll be interesting. Just to add that Stormrider has made his own intake on this and his link is found in the description. So use our videos to your advantage as well as others. This isn't about who's best, let's get that clear. This is about what I've discovered and to show their features side by side, including all those lovely details. As you know, if it's on the channel, then I like it or I own it. I have no interest to BS or to hype something that simply doesn't interest me. Those who follow me know I'm an amateur with watch passion and takes no liability if you choose the same watches as me. I want to cover the simple differences between them, but no, the GGB100 is a hybrid, so does offer more functions, but the GWG1000 does have some nice quirks that are more suited for the more demanding times. Let's kick off with something different. Button pressure to see which has more resistance. I have to add the buttons on the GWG1000 has the edge with fill and tactile feedback. Has a more solid feel too, but don't think for a moment that the GGB100 are fluffy, they're still very good. The tones on button presses are quiet on the GWG1000 compared to the GGB100. But the alarms are quite matching in strength, so to me this is a nice feature as the button tones are there for you and not to be a performance for attention under your partner's ears. The GGB100 is carbon core so is the lighter of the two, but the GWG1000 isn't a deal breaker especially if you're a no fuss tough guy. The size differences are... As for comfort, both fit extremely well with the use of the cover end back protector. Yes, that's the name of them. The GWG1000 does offer more curve hugging to the wrist, while the GGB100 offers more ventilation with gaps. Over a longer period, the GGB100 is more balanced and goes unnoticed. As for the GWG1000, can sometimes feel top heavy during certain activities like kayaking being the most honest. For every day, the GGB100 is more suited, mainly because there's no crown to pull out, but this does mean that unexpected adjustments can be made to the watch if in tight spaces, while the GWG1000 can only be adjusted with the crown. Plus, the buttons have more protection from the bezel. Using this straight edge, you can see that the GGB100 buttons are more exposed and can be pressed. And this goes for all four corner buttons, compass, altimeter, mode, adjust, but luckily protected on the connect button, while the GWG1000 
especially on the compass and altimeter buttons, are tucked away using the crown guards. Here you can see that there's a gap between the straight edge and the bottom itself. However, the GPR-B1000 rangeman does touch slightly on the left side, but I want to also show that this rangeman has the DNA from the GWG-1000, and I have seen signs of this on other G-Shocks, so is this another side to why it's in such demand? The looks. There is no mistaking, it's very good on the eye, even from here, 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 and even on the bomb hole sensor. Here. The negative display on both is a personal choice, and in my opinion, positive displays wins. But with regards to any digitals, a positive display would stick out more and look like a piece of grey Lego. Looking at this GWN-Q1000 Golf Masters negative display, it's much sharper and more visible in low lighting, so something to consider. Bezel construction. GGB100 uses a carbon bezel with four corner bumpers and one sensor bumper which are screwed into the case. The GWG1000 uses a one piece bezel that's secured with four strap screws. The bezel hex screws on the GWG1000 are fake, meaning they're only pushed into the bezel. But as mentioned in another video of mine, in my opinion, this looks more about additional protection to the corners of the bezel. Average cost of a bezel replacement for the GWG1000 is between 10 to 15 pounds. The GGB100 bezel bumpers are around four pounds each, but no possibility to buy the carbon bezel as of yet. The compass is just a tad faster on the GGB100. But the GWG1000 shows both the bearing and degrees information together on the display. The GGB100 needs a button press to flip between. Barometer difference. The GGB100 has an option for a 20 minutes, 1 hour, 20 hours or a whopping 56 hour graph that can also be shown in home time, while the GWG1000 has a fixed 20 hours. Backlight on the GGB100 is much brighter, but it isn't fully auto, while the GWG1000 operates its auto backlight only when in the dark. The numbers on the GGB100 aren't loomed compared to the GWG1000. Altimeter recording. The GGB100 makes a time date altimeter stamp in the watch, but can add these to the app when connected. The GWG1000 can also make a time date altimeter stamp, storing 30 at a time in the watch. The GGB100 stores only 14 in the watch. Independent hands on the GWG1000, thus the hands can position more quickly. Also, if the hands are obscuring the display when going through the modes, they will move slightly for a moment to view the display, and the minute hand moves six times a minute. The GGB100 hands are geared together, so if obscuring the display, they will need to be manually shifted. Hand shift on the GGB100 can be held to up to one hour with auto return. The GWG1000 shifts the hands for 10 seconds, but can be held longer if one of the shift buttons are held down, as long as you like. The GWG1000 is more standalone, as it uses solar and multi-band 6 atomic syncing. The GGB100 uses a two-year replaceable lithium battery and syncs via Bluetooth. Timer differences. The GGB100 has 24 hours, with the GWG1000 at a maximum of 60 minutes. The GGB100 timer has to be stopped, then reset before you can make any adjustments, while the GWG1000 can be reset or adjusted quickly by pulling the crown out even if running. Example, adjusting the timer while running. Seven button press equals seven operations. On the GGB100, start timer, stop timer, reset timer, select adjust, adjust timer, select adjust, start timer. On the GWG1000, two button press, three crown actions equals five operations. Start timer, pull crown out to reset or adjust, then push back in. Start timer, that could be two operations really. I have to add one feature that the GWG1000 offers that has become a must, and that's the mode subdial. 
On many G-Shocks, knowing what mode you're in is only flashed briefly from the start. So if you're running the stopwatch and timer, you could very easily mistaken one for the other. But with this subdial, it's always pointing to what is displayed. And being it's bold makes it really easy upon a quick glance. Also, you can judge where a mode is, so it gives you a quicker button shot. This is a huge strength in this GWG1000. And there are other G-Shocks that use a subdial too. Now for the confusion. The GWG1000 uses a modified movement from the GWN1000 golf master that uses module number 5371 the gwg 1000 uses the module 5365 that's named the 5463 which is basically a modified movement used in the prw 6000 pro trek and that is identified as module number 5365 how confusing was that? Now, there could also be a possibility that the GWN-Q1000 Golf Master uses something from the ones I've just mentioned, but turned upside down, add in some fish fingers, attach a fourth sensor, and a new watch is born. I'm just guessing without actually searching that. This is classified, Mr. Rangeman, and here are your new documents. You'll find everything you'll need, including the name you requested. Interesting. Commander Mudmaster. Yes, because you'll need this. Looks like I need to go for a drive. still haven't answered the question, why is the GWG-1000 Mudmaster so sweet? There's a certain amount of functions you need. Complement that with your own skills gives you great strength. There's times you need to go off grid and have no connection. In a simple format, let me explain. You are offered some cake. Your instincts quickly calculate what you need. Too much slows you down, too little leaves you wanting more. Just the right amount keeps you going. Dr. Bolex. How did you Find me. Well, let's say it was a piece of cake. Do I get a cherry on top? Of course. By the way, Mr. Rangeman, how was it being Mr. Mudmaster? That's the time. Thanks for watching. I've just realized I have air, land and sea. Maybe I've eaten too much cake. Well, let's say it was a piece of cake.